our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds is our virtual tabletop of choice, providing us access to roles, tokens, maps, and more. You can try it today for free at fantasygrounds.com. While you're there, why not check out Fantasy Grounds Unity? World Anvil is a remarkable resource, whether you're a writer, GM, or player, organizing your campaign notes or building an entire world. Get forging today for free at worldanvil.com. And before we get into today's game, we'd like to shout out our friends at Andrews McMeal Publishing, who published the wonderful game Zweihander. If you haven't checked that out, you can catch it here on Wednesdays. We'd also like to mention Modifius, who manage and produce a wide range of RPGs. Whether you feel like being dishonored, exploring a tale from the loop, or boldly going with Star Trek adventures, why not check out Modifius.com? And we are live for the first time in this May-June season and we are beginning with a song of ice and fire from Green Ronin and our brand new show, The Wall. Let's go around and meet our cast and crew today, see how everyone is doing. I'm very excited. Why don't we begin uh, with the wonderful Kate joining us here for the first time on Encounter Roleplay. Hi Kate. Hi. Hi everyone. Um, I am super excited and super nervous at the same time. Um, this is this is going to be epic, um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm just a bit like, Ooh! but um, yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Madison, um, otherwise known as Actors at Work on various social medias, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to play URL for you today. I don't know Very what else to say. Excited. That is great. And you look awesome. We love the cosplay here on Encounter Roleplay. And speaking of cosplay, the wonderful Alyssa has joined us with the best backdrop I've ever seen. Thank you. How are you doing, friend? I am doing fantastic. I'm excited to be back. Um, uh, my name is Alyssa, aka Origami Shuriken, and today I am playing a wildling healer named Runa. We both use she, her pronouns, and I am excited to see how this goes. <laughs> I am also excited. And Dev, we saw you on a meat grinder recently, and now you're on a full campaign. How are you doing, friend? Doing well, doing well. Uh, very excited to be here. Also, uh, uh, nervous to see what happens. I'm, uh, I'm playing uh, Laris. He's a new recruit to the Builders. And uh, uh, here in this world, the stakes are always very high. And on the wall, anything uh, can go wrong. So I'm excited to see what happens. And another brother in black, but a return of a friend of mine. I've met Jarden Burke before, and a return of Matt, the killer GM, who behind the scenes helped me a lot with the Wild Anvil for Caroline's. Um, hi, Matt. How are you doing? Welcome to Westeros. Oh, never left, Charlie. Oh, always have a little bit of myself here. And uh, Jarden Burke is uh, a revisitation, though. We're a few years on, a couple decades past, so some things have changed. Actions do have consequences in this world, and we're going to see how that plays out. I am super excited. This cast is going to be phenomenal. The story, as it's set up, is amazing. You're all going to get to see it. So happy. And I am so very happy because our commander on the wall for this campaign is going to be played by the wonderful Pope. Hi, Pope. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It's, it's Pope Worldbuild. Good to be back here on Counter Roleplay, playing Commander Rail Dondarian. We both use he, him pronouns. And with that, I think it's time we go someplace cold. Indeed, we will be going someplace very cold. Before we do, I do want to say a massive thank you to chat, who are on a level 3 hype train right now. We've had 10 subscriptions, which means two major events have already been unlocked. We're close to unlocking our retweet goals, uh, so keep an eye out for that. Things will be happening in chat. And I want to shout out YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, please consider hitting that little subscribe button. Hit the bell so that you never miss one of our wonderful VOD uploads. And let us know why you were sent to the wall. Without further ado, however, I think it is time for the snow to begin to fall. 
the frost to creep between the stones, and for us to journey north, far north of the crownlands, past winter fell, through the gifts, the new and Brandon's, and up to the wall. Night gathers, and now my watch begins. It shall not end until my death. I shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. I shall wear no crowns and win no glory. I shall live and die at my post. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I'm the fire that burns against the cold, the light that brings the dawn, the horn that wakes the sleepers, the shield that guards the realms of men. I pledge my life and honor to the Night's Watch for this night and all the nights to come. A night is coming but not for a few hours yet. The brothers gather, having finished their meager lunch, and sit about the barren tables of Castle Giant's chair. Soon training will begin, and it's a strangely warm day. The castle is buffeted by winds blown up from the coast, this castle, the most western of any on the wall, and the wind rattles around the fallen tower of the West Rose. Sir Jardin Burke, you are leader of the Rangers. You sent out the morning's patrol, and tonight you will take your shift as darkness gathers. But first, there are new recruits. Jordan wipes away the last crumbs of lunch. Silent curse against the cold. And he'll lead the men outside. All right, worthless sacks. Let's see what salt you've got on the training ground. Come on, move it. and they'll lead them out, get them their training equipment, make sure it gets doled out, and start pairing them off to see what they can do. Amongst the recruits brought to Giant's chair by Commander Dondarian when he joined you, it's a strange batch of folk folk who should not be here. Most of them far more accustomed to the warmer southern climes, and all of them now shivering. One of the older recruits who's been here, what is it now, Laris, two, three years? Follows out to join in the training in the yard. Uh, Laris takes his wooden shield 
uh, familiar to him. And even after several years and several battles, the longsword in his hand still feels new and strange. He, he grips it a bit tighter to hide uh, his own newness to uh, this land that is beginning to become home and uh, wades in to display some of what he's had to quickly learn here with the new recruits to see if any of them have swung a sword. So, Burke, what are the drills you'll be leading the recruits through today? What is it that you are preparing them for? This time, what he's doing mainly is seeing, you know, do they know how to swing a sword? Do they know how to bring up a shield to block? Um, if they can do that, he might go on to seeing how well they do against arrow fire. Because he's had some dummy arrows made uh, for some of the more experienced rangers to maybe have a little bit of fun at the new recruit's expense. And these dummy arrows essentially have at the end a, a soft pouch full of chalk dust. So you can see when this hits a brother's black armor, his black cloak, and even his facial features. It's gusty here in the courtyard where you train, but this is the most sheltered area with still enough room to do so. And at the heart of this courtyard, a giant stone chair. They say it was crafted by a giant, a gift for a commander. All you know is it's a bloody big rock in the middle of your training grounds. And Recruit Laris, I would like you to make a fighting swords test. Uh, if you use long blades or short blades, apply the appropriate specialty dice. Okay. So that's uh, that's a roll two keep two, correct? Yep. If that's uh, if you don't have any specialty dice, it'll just be your fighting. Okay. So that's a nine. A nine. You stand there, ready to prove your worth and see what these new recruits have, sword in hand, and you thrust. There is a lightness to your footstep and a keenness to the strike, and you touch the brother's ribs. It's just a wooden sword, it's nothing significant at this point. But then you see he's picked up a sword as well, only this is a metal training sword. He apparently missed the memo of what you were practicing with today. And he is about to swing towards you. And I'd like you to make a uh, awareness dodge. Oh, sorry, it's uh, agility dodge or awareness um, notice test. I think we'll do that. Whatever is better for you. I always drop one of my dice every time. Perfect. What did you roll? I rolled a uh, 21. Okay. Uh, you have the drawback of Craven, correct? Does that only apply to your fighting tests? No. That's anything anything in combat or in Okay, so I'd like you uh, to apply it for this test, if you will. Um, so I think that just causes you to drop one. Uh, you need to make a, sorry. You need to make a will test, correct, to face your fear. Yes. Okay, so I'd like you to do that for me. A will test. I'm very distracted by the mini dice that's rattling around by my feet. I'm sorry. I'm here. Uh, so I roll and then drop. That's a nine on the will. Nine. Um, and it's a 12 that is your target number, I believe. So, right. You see the man bring the sword down in an overarm arc intending to hit you as hard as possible as if this were a willow reed and you were a child being beaten so Jardin, you note the lack of expertise in this swing 
its brute force over any kind of finesse. But Laris, you go to dodge and it turns into you slipping on the ice of this courtyard, ending up kind of on your knees and cowering. The blade just misses you as you tumble down, but you have one of those frightening moments. You remember that this isn't pretend. These fights, they're all real. They will be real. Sir Jordan sees this. Hold! And he'll stalk over and wrench the sword from the recruit's hands. One, you're swinging like it's an axe and he's a bloody log. Two, wood sword. Wood sword against your brothers. Never draw steel. And he'll shove him away. Get up. Yes, sir. Never cede ground to your enemy. I, of course, the the blade, sir. Of course, sir. Find a new partner. Yes, sir. And Laris, as we'll you scan around, sorry, Matt. I was gonna say, we'll stout in your heart yet, lad. And Laris, as you look around your options for another partner, there are a number of men, various um, conditions, a couple a little skinny and underfed, one returned and you suspect very muscular with it and then just peeking out from behind him what could be a little more than a boy 13 15 perhaps much smaller than the rest uh Laris will walk towards the the first uh, option that he saw, but make a point uh, to walk past the young boy. Look, look at him with a a, a confused and a bit frightened look that he tries to hide, saying, what What could a boy so young be doing here? Can't you see this is no place for someone like you? They told me it was exactly the place for someone like me. He seems to kind of pull himself up to stand a little taller, straightens the scruffy, dirty, tunic he wears wipes his nose you can see a small icicle forming where the snot has dripped down and he's looking now towards those baskets of practice swords and he's looking towards you i'd say so it's maybe not a place for someone like you though <laughs> nice sword What? Why don't we see what you're made of then? Get one of those swords there and follow me. All right. See, so you're feeling a bit braver now. And he walks out with full bravado and gust. Uh, he kind of glances towards John and Burke, who is overseeing the general courtyard. There's probably about five pairs of men here doing various things, many of which need proper advice and how to swing a sword. Many are aware that a blade is sharp and the pointy end goes in the enemy. But apart from that, there's little form 
or skill to their practice. And he's stepping in and and providing guidance. Some of it, some of it's rough. Some of it's less rough, depending on like how much of a danger they're being to themselves and others when doing it. But generally, it's it's all guided towards making them better swordsmen in this case. Okay, I would like you to make a, I guess, a warfare command roll for this, as you lead the drill, as you try and focus in on who needs what help. And thank you so much to our retweeters in the Chaos Chorus. We have crossed our first goal, and we are currently at 25, and we'll be updating throughout the stream. Thank you all so, so much. That is a 14. Okay, very good. So on a 14, you are quick to notice people trying to sneak things past you. You are adept at knowing how to correct a man's form without picking up a fight with him at present. And you know which of these people will be problematic. And you can quickly rearrange the pairs to keep from too many bloody noses too many accidental bone breaks as the blood is heating up in the courtyard and the men are getting engrossed in their practice fights and Dev, I would like you to make another fighting How did you do that? So I roll a two and I lose one of those. Yep. So you keep the best of your two dice. Oh! Mm. Uh, and Dev has rolled two ones in a feat that is as remarkable as every time Nuno rolls dice, and I did not know we were going to have a Nuno in this game. Welcome, <laughs> Dev. Welcome. You follow a fine legacy. Uh, okay, on a one. So you go grasp at this sword, but your hands are numb. And as you look at this boy and see his stance and how he grips his practice weapon, you realize he might actually know what he's doing. And you were just bested. And you hear Sir Jardenberg bark at a man, and it makes you startle. And the boy thrusts before you even have a chance to swing, and you are taking a good whack to your ribs. It's not enough to cause you any injury or wound, but it certainly wins you. And in a flash, he has done a, a kind of a twirl almost. That's how it seems to you as he skips across the icy stones and he smacks you in the back of the spine. And all you can hear rattling around your head is his laughter as he bests you. <sighs> uh. Crawl, uh, crawling to his his uh, uh, feet, uh, to his knees, and then to his feet. Uh, upset, uh, l losing losing his composure. Uh, fine, fine. We're all we're all we're all fighters here, then, aren't we? Well, we. There's work to be done, anyways, and 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 you'll learn. You'll learn just just how how much this place takes takes from you, and he'll he'll try and <laughs> I think run and find find someone else, someone that maybe he knows. <laughs> As you issue out, you'll find what this place takes from you in your shaking voice. There's a low rumble, and then a crack like lightning and the stone of the castle seems to quake for a moment the courtyard falls silent as everyone looks around not sure what just happened commander dondarian you feel it in your office you'd heard the men in their drills you'd heard the busyness of the castle 
and then you'd heard it, that great booming crack. Just like in the middle of writing something, like a report, just eyes come up, listens, and then the complete quiet is what upsets him. Sets down the quill, gets up off the desk, and is going to hurriedly head down to the courtyard. Um, if he sees any rangers along the way, he's just going to go. And you come through to the courtyard with two or three crows following. Just a little noise isn't enough to make you stop fighting. Get back to work. As he hollers over the side. You heard the commander. Back to drills, unless you see the walls collapsing around you. And then... To... <laughs> Getting a feel for for everything, and then from where he he is is just going to quickly give a sharp glance about the area. Going, okay, is this the thaw? Is something coming loose? Do I need to grab the head of the builders? What's going on? Okay, so I'd like you to make an awareness notice check for me. And as Jarden Burke as echoes your sentiment, I'd like Matt if you can roll the command test for me, so it's a warfare command. Sweetly. Unless you prefer persuasion convince, which I will also take in this instance. I actually would prefer that in this case. That's All right, then let's roll that. Slightly. Slight modification so, of the commands. The awareness is a 17. And the convince is a 24. The nervous men are all looking to you, Commander Dondarian. And then as Sir Jardin speaks, they look to him. And they seem to steady themselves and return to what they were doing. A little less enthusiastic to begin with, still nervous, still not sure what just happened. And as you scan the courtyard, Commander, come aware of the disrepair of this castle the lack of proper care in its masonry. You can see in places limp frost vines growing, weaving their way like ivy in the sheltered yard, glistening all over the frost. And it is glistening. It's melting. You believe this crack probably was just a thaw, a fault in the ice, the permafrost of the wall, possibly perfectly normal, but such a crack could lead to tragedy. You are more than familiar with this castle's history. It was part of your briefing when you became commander here. I'm going to send one of the crows that's with me to go and find me the head builder. Uh, we need to talk now. Um, whilst waiting, I'm going to stay where I am. And I'm just going to, like, loom over the training ground. Get a good look at everything and also let, let these men actually see command. Aside from Burke. Also, knowing that the 13-year-old came with me, I'm just kind of curious about the lad and see how he's doing, as well as specifically due to uh, Rail's background, any of the Dornishmen and how they're doing. Okay, so at the moment in the castle, there's kind of a head to each 
of the the groups, if you like. You have a, a leader for the stewards, one for the builders, and one for the rangers. The leader of the builders is currently out performing maintenance that you had ordered. One of the first things you'd done on arriving was to not repeat some of the follies of your predecessors. Um, and you know he will probably not return before nightfall, making the most of the daylight hours here in this northern section, making the most of the gusting wind dying down a little this afternoon. You are aware that Recruit Laris is a builder here amongst the rangers as you scan them. You know the boy was one of a group of criminals essentially gathered from the southern regions and sent up to the wall. This group you'd selected when you came to this command because they were healthy, which meant a lot right now. They had not been captives for very long. And although the journey north is long and would have taken several months, they've been relatively well maintained. The Dornishmen are shivering. It's not hard to miss that they've bulked up massively on any fur and clothing available. But everyone seems relatively well if some are slightly underfed. So Berg is, of course, the head of the uh, rangers here. And the steward's head is currently a maester, an elderly gentleman, very busy, very busy about his books. There'll be time for the maester later. Uh, but seeing just either the, our head builder has, has hit something, something has just fallen, or there's something about to go wrong. Given that I have a feeling that most of the builders are out, with the exception of theirs, I'm going to descend from my perch and go pluck the fellow out of training. I'd like you to describe for me how Commander Dondarin appears as you emerge fully into this courtyard and swoop down upon Recruit Laris. Um, he is a tall, broad fellow. Um, the uh, armor he wears is uh, a hauberk of plate um, that is coated in lacquered leather, black. Um, he makes a lot of noise as he moves. He is not a quiet man. Um, so, thunderous, ponderous steps. He is also not quick as he moves. It's very deliberate. And he, he's one of those fellows that you feel his presence and people tend to get out of the way. Um, as he just comes into the courtyard, as soon as he comes in, like, slight head nod to Berg as, again, this is his training field. As much as I'm a commander, I understand command. And acknowledge him, and then just make a beeline for Laris. Recruit Laris. I have need of you. Commander. Of course. What, what, what is it? You're done with your training for the day. Come with me. Yes, Commander, I... Well, I... I certainly can put... Stop stammering. Put your things away. We've got work to do. Uh, silent nod and, and heads over and... and with some shaking in his 
uh, sword hand especially, putting his, his uh, equipment away. Once he's done, it's moving out of the courtyard, um, expecting Laris to follow him as he goes back up the stairs out of the courtyard, acknowledges Burke on his way. Um, Commander. I hate to steal one who definitely needs training, but I have need of him. In the meantime, if you can find testing materials, I want all these men drilled on spears. I think we might have a couple training spears down in the uh, down in the stores. I'll talk to a steward. Thank you. Of course, Commander. Do as you will. Um, and pass Burke, and then just wait for Laris to follow. And Dev, how does Laris appear as he follows the commander? If he follows the commander, um, Laris is uh, a bit tall uh, and somewhat lanky, uh, probably a bit more so with uh, the meals he's been receiving. And I think he he's, he cowers a bit to try and hide his uh, uh, his height. And sort of crunch, scrunches in on himself, but keeps a sharp eye uh, on the commander, uh, trying to mm. put blinders on to the the rest of his terrible, terrible evening, and just focus on this light that hopefully is not leading him to uh, a punishment, but to some some glimpse of staying here a day longer. <laughs> And as you proceed into the castle, Commander, you are aware. You've been taking in all the details ever since you left your office. And you're aware of a sound like a very distant, large piece of paper being crumpled. It's, a, it's not quite a cracking noise. It's a scrunching kind of a noise. It's a lot of pressure. It's compression. Or something that's going to splinter. Recruit. By my knowledge, you're the only builder left in this keep. The first builder and his men went out to start beginning repairs. Something yes, struck wrong. I'm going to send you with a contingent of stewards, track down our problem, assess it, address it if you can, and then give me a report. You, you want me to find the problem? Yes, you're a builder. This is your duty. I am sending yeah. you with a group of stewards to find our problem, assess it, address it, and then report. I understand, Commander. I, yes, absolutely. I will send the stewards to you in but a few minutes. I suggest you make yourself ready. And congratulations on your first command. Thank you, Commander. Laris, thank uh, me yet. Thank me after you finish your report. He'll, he'll I'll sprint in, out of the room. I'll go find some stewards. Um, since relatively new here, I'm just going to ask, okay, find me five of your most patient and the fine, five of your most keen-eyed and then have them report to recruit Laris. We need to find what's wrong. And the steward gives you a considering look. 
He has fluffy gray eyebrows that kind of leap up like electrocuted caterpillars kind of jumping up his forehead and fluffing out all the more as you explain what you need. And the whiskers of his mustache twitch and she shuffles the thought from side to side. Yes, keen eyes, yes. We have those, yes, yes. Somewhere about the place. And then what else was it, Commander? Yeah, I just need five of the most keen eyed. Five. Five yes, of yes. five of the most patient amongst the Steward Corps to report to recruit Laris. There is something distinctly wrong about the keep. I need to find out what. Oh, there are lots of things wrong with the keep, Commander. <laughs> Five, yes, five patient. Men of the Black tend to be patient, Commander, or they tend to be dead. That's the nature of the oath. <laughs> yes, five, yes. For eyes, you might want to speak to the Rangers, of course. Right now, I need rangers to be on their guard in case somebody's undermining us. Undermining? No. Yes, okay. it's summer. We're not dealing with desperate wildlings, we're dealing with opportunistic ones. I got my commission on the backs of dead wildlings. We need Dealings to with wildlings are tricky, yes, yes. Best, best not, if the histories are to be believed. Commander. It's not a rumor, it's the truth that Glover was sent here because of politics. I am sent here to clean up his mess and make this keep ready. Ready for what, Commander? Ready for conflict. War is coming. <laughs> you know, the car stocks ever change their words. Well, maybe, maybe. Five! Five of each, yes. Bear with me. <laughs> Ice in the bones. And he kind of leverages himself out of this bench that he's perched on, tidies up his papers into a neater pile stops the quill from rolling away and onto the ground. Shall be done, Commander. Thank you. Tomorrow, if you have time, I want to discuss these many problems of this keep. It will be a very long day, Commander. I'll Very make long indeed. And then he'll just turn about and head back to his office in a bit of a huff. And as you do, and as you kind of huff away, you can hear this elderly steward repeating the, the oath of the Night's Watch. Night gathers, my watch begins. Live and die at my post. And you return to your office. Out in the courtyard, Sajardin, the drills continue and you believe you're making some headway, but every now and again you catch that disconcerting crackling sound. Every now and again you see the nervous step of a man waiting for the crack like thunder, for some part of the castle to shed, to fall. And then the wind picks up and it rattles again, dancing around the four chairs, uh, the four legs of that giant's chair in the courtyard, pushing at the skinnier of the men, threatening to rip them from their feet 
and you feel it pulling too at your cloak, pulling at your clothes, trying to seep into your core with its icy, icy breath. Right, pulling closer to the chair a little bit. Mind the spears. Come on. They're more likely to use those anyway. Forward, forward. No. Not like that. Come on. And the Dornish is certainly more adept with the spears. You are pleased to see some improvement in your drills, in your practice. And then it happens. Another crack. Only really, this one is closer. And from the back of the chair itself, a shard of ice, ten foot tall, cascades down into the ground like a guillotine blade. And Sebek, I would like you to make um, either an awareness notice check or a, a warfare command check. And this is to determine how many of your men survive and how. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Um, those are both the same. So. And 11. 11. You see the sheet just drop. And the crack rumbles around the courtyard and you see two men buried and a plume of smoky ice just filling up the space like a mist that's then blown away in the next breath by the wind as it howls through. There are cries, shouts, screams. And then that eerie feeling, that waiting feeling. And he'll just immediately, just in a moment, get them out from there, now! You can see one man has been crushed to death, that's easy enough. His blood staining the stone and shattered ice. But another is struggling, and the men rush forward to attempt to pull him out from under this weight. And let's see how they do. Uh, would you like to assist at all, Jardin? Absolutely. All right, so this is going to be um, a strength test. I think that comes under athletics. Or does it have a yeah. zone stat? Yeah, feats of strength is under athletics. So Perfect. Which is fine by me. Hey! All right, and you rend this man free, but not without some loss. There's a grave injury to his leg. It seems shredded to your eye. The twist of flesh and bone. And he just has that flash of recognition, like he's seen something like this before. Not the first time, not even the second or third time. It's what happens when somebody gets crushed or, you know, a great weight falls and you can tell they're not going to walk right again. And the man is screaming over and over this agonizing sound. Get him something to bite down on and take him to the maester's chambers. We can save him yet. You're going to be okay. And he you can tell, even though he's he's business, there's that slight quaver of recognition that everything is not okay that something something's going wrong with the castle and it's weighing on everybody at this point and it's been manifested in this horrific accident and commander and recruit you both hear it the percussion of it, that rolling sound, that sharp sound, and then the boom of the collision of ice on stone, followed by the screams and the hurry.
at, at the sound and more the screaming. It's. I, I like to think he just made it back to his office and just opened the door. And closes the door, turns back around, and heads back to the courtyard. Um, just to see for himself with his own eyes what is obviously happening. Uh, getting there and then seeing that one brother is most definitely and the other one, if he doesn't get treatment, might still perish. And even if he is saved, well, that man is not going to be a ranger. That man, at best, is going to be a member of the stewards. Possibly to help and maybe eventually apprentice under our maester to get training and possibly when the old coot croaks replace him. And just gets out there, just a heavy sigh of, I knew something wrong was going to happen. I hope this is the thing, as opposed to just the start of the thing. And then that sinking feeling, something else is going to happen. As you hear the horn echo from beyond the wall. But it's just one blast. Brothers arriving. With that, um, I'm going to find Burke. Burke is making sure that the um, that the man is being bared properly towards the maester's chambers. Um, but once he sees the commander approaching, he just basically gives some very simple instructions and goes to attend him. Commander? That's enough drilling for today. Certainly seems like the castle's had enough of it, so. Yes. I hate to do this, but I need you and your five best. Take your horses. I need to have an assessment on both sides of the wall by morning. The whole this wall. Yes. Well, just our section underneath the keep. I need to know if we need to start making preparations to abandon it. Yes, Commander. Good. I'll make sure that you and your lads get a double share once you get back. Very generous, Commander. Very appreciated. See it done. He'll nod, and... It was off the chair, you know. Sheet of ice off the chair. <sighs> I'm going to have to have a long talk with our maester. But that has to wait till tomorrow. They have to. You superstitious man, Burke. Mm, I wouldn't call myself a man given to fits of it. But I know a sign when I see one. Great. In that case, take 12 of your best. I want to make sure you all come back certain they'll all be thankful for the extra work. Something to take their minds off of that. Shall we also prepare a detail to see our brother to rest? Yes. 
hold on that until we find out the fate of the other brother. I don't want to have to be making two pyres, one right after another. As you wish, Commander. I'll go see my men. Laris, what were you doing as you heard the sound? Where did you go afterwards? I was uh, in my room gathering my builder's things. Uh, there's a belt I have, which is, uh, uh, it's too big for me. So I sort of sling it over my shoulder and come out to the courtyard. Uh, I hear the screams and they remind me of screams that I heard during shipwrecks uh, at home. Uh, the, uh, the terrible storms of Shipbreakers Bay. And I realize that here, we don't have the sea to drown out the screaming. And I wait for it to stop and realize that he'll be screaming most of the night. And I look down from the courtyard to um, see when the uh, stewards that my commander has sent for might arrive. Screaming is what fills your ears, Runa. You'd had plans for today. You were to gather fresh supplies. Little did you know how urgently and how soon you would need them. Riva is giving birth. Her baby is arriving early. And it is you who was called. Where are you, Runa? as this scene unfolds, and how do you appear? I am coming uh, likely out of the woods, maybe with a, a basket or a satchel. I have a fur cloak and a hood, because uh, it's it's Summer is coming, but it's always chilly up here. And I have uh, fire-kissed hair and freckles. And uh, I have a spear with me. Because you can never be too careful. And I, I rush back to the camp where my little band of survivors has taken shelter. And I start giving instructions to the, the f people are always frantic when babies are coming. So I give them things to do, boil water, gather fresh cloths, um, and I go in to uh, tend to the mother-to-be. And the mother-to-be is posted up in what to many would look almost like a tree house, a structure erected in a tall alpine tree, its branches cut back to make space. And she is screaming as if there aren't others who will hear her. You know Riva very well, you grew up together. She's usually strong and quiet but whatever is happening must be incredibly painful to her. Her husband, you know, is far away gathering. It has been a difficult month or so for your family, your extended family. What you would normally rely upon has not been easy to find. Many things have been ruined by the change in the weather. And I would like you to make a, a healing test for me. Um, and we will use a uh, treat ailment for this. For your specialty. Grab my dice, because 
I forgot to log back into Fantasy Grounds. <laughs> oh, good. All right. So I drop the lowest one. Yep. Twenty-one. 21, heroic 21 is very good. Uh, I was about to remind all the cast that they have bonus dice, or, or I should say extra test dice on their screen, but I don't think we're going to need it with rolls like that. Uh, on a 21, you press Sariva's stomach, and you can feel that the baby hasn't quite fully turned. Uh, and you are able to guide and encourage her, as well as the child, to a more comfortable position. You aid her with some herbs to ease the pain that she is feeling. And you know, it's only a matter of time, but it will take time. And Yorel, out in the woods, as you go about your business for the day, you can hear her screams in the distance. You know that that's where that small encampment is you probably know who it is screaming. It sounds like a, a birthing scream, right? So I'm kind of reluctant to go and assist. Um, but feel compelled to wander back towards the camp um, and, uh, and see if there is anything I can do from experience, if nothing else. So I'm going to wander back with Cloud and see what's happening. But there's no huge urgency because I know that Runa is around. And as you pass towards the camp, how do you appear? Um, I am um, quite tall, like about six foot uh, and quite built. Uh, she is a hunter uh, as a, uh, one of the main things that she does. Um, uh, she's um, a little different from others. She has taken to being a little bit apart from the group, but she also knows knows that uh, wolves are better in packs and the wilds are no place for a lone person. Um, but there is something that kind of just pulls her apart um, from the others. Um, but there is also something that pulls her back, so she is very much torn between worlds at this point. Um, uh, yeah, she has got charcoal scraped across her eyes partly to help against the winters and the and snow uh blindness although the snows have not been falling as much um and partly uh because of her new path um she is yeah she is delving in she has delved into the darkness uh over the last year and a bit and um it's going to take a lot to pull her back. You walk your path with your companion, careful tread and light step. And you can hear another moving too towards the camp, scanning the sight lines. You see another of your clan pushing forward in a hurry, someone else responding to the cries. This is Jackson one of the more elder members of the clan. He was injured greatly in the battle 18 months ago. And like you, has taken to spending much time apart. But he's always there when something happens. He always finds a way to be there. And you can see the concern just all over his eyes as he's focused on getting back to that camp. In his hand, his short bow, and on his back, a old quiver full of just a handful of arrows.
Five as babies come. Aye. Jackson. I'm coming, I heard. Early. Damn women. It's early, and I and I, I start to pick up pace. Starting to feel like actually this isn't quite right. She wasn't due, mm -hmm. and the, and 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 the screaming's still continuing. And so maybe Runa is out foraging, and nobody is here because she didn't expect it. So I, I'm picking up pace. I'm probably going to overtake him. And he calls to you in comments. Should we call in the crows with that noise? Oh. I don't want crows here. I'll, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to sort of, oh no, I can't quite jog. I'm, I'm just going to pick up the pace. And you do, and this is familiar terrain to you. It's easy enough for you to traverse, and you push down towards the encampment to what is essentially three tree houses, each more rickety than the one before it, and a small central fire, which has been lit today for cooking, and is currently boiling the best pots of water that the wildlings can produce. Steam and smoke rise through the air, and you feel that warmth as you come into this circle. I've got a couple of rabbits hooked on my belt. I'm going to fling them down by the fire for someone to deal with as I kind of swing around and head for the hut. You climb up the makeshift ladder and there you find Runa tending to the woman who seems still in a great deal of pain but definitely cared for. She whimpers quietly now. It's early. Everything all right, Runa? In this breach, we had to make sure she didn't get impatient and push too soon. We turned in. We'll be all right. Can I help or drop her back? Let her grip your arm, not your hand, or you'll dislocate your fingers. Been there. And I sit, uh, kneel down next to Riva. There's a glisten of sweat on her forehead, and her hair is just sticking at the fringe. You can see she also has smudged charcoal on her face, although it looks more like dirt at this point. Just kind of rubs here and there. And there's something in her eyes. A fear. A worry. As she looks to you, as you take grasp of her. All right. And it's, I'm, I, I almost want to be looking away from her. I'm sort of, this, the scene is, I've lived through it too many times. Um, and uh, new life doesn't necessarily mean new hope, at least for ERL at the moment. So this is not, this is not a t summer is not a time to be bringing in uh, a new child. We're we're a not a stable society. Like this clan is broken. This is not a hopeful thing for your at least. And as you all but avoid her gaze, she looks again to you, Runa. Her reassurance. And you feel that tenseness, Yarel, in the part of her arm that you grip as another contraction pushes through her. I take deep breaths myself 
to help her through it. Um, I, I expect she'll scream at me. But um, I've probably at least assisted with a lot of these. So I know what to expect. Okay, I'd like you to roll a Persuasion Convince for me. Or a Persuasion Charm, if you'd prefer. As you try and kind of ease her and give her some confidence in this situation. And she does through grit and she's like, oh, I, I know, I'm trying. You'll be okay. Um, I would like to use one of my bonus dice. Okay, this. I'll update the overlay. Uh, so this essentially becomes like a new test dice to you. So if you were rank four before, consider yourself rank five. You don't need to drop right. this additional dice. Twenty-one. She has a miracle worker. And Twenty-one again. She makes some other kind of half sassy remark, but she smirks at you. And then her eyes go wide and she lets out another gritted, bearing pain. But you can tell she, she's more relaxed. You can do this. We're almost there. And outside, Jarrell, you can hear a conversation between Jackson and another man. Maybe Grayson, you're not sure. And they're discussing their fears that the crows will find you. That you've come too close to the castle. You shouldn't have settled here. And what she do in having her baby at a time like this? I, I'm tr- I'm kind of trying- I'm listening, but I'm trying to- I'm kind of wishing they- This is a conversation that I'd be part of, but to- the, they're having it so close, uh, that they can be overheard, um, uh, when- when someone is giving birth and cannot change where they are, and- and the decisions were made as to where we- where we are. And uh, and Ural was against how close they got, so she's in agreement, but she's also like, this is not the time. This decision mm-hmm. was made. Um, yeah, she's, you hear her. She would love to go fight with them, but <laughs> but she is she is currently being gripped by the on the forearm quite tightly, and so quite she is tightly. not moving anywhere. Yeah, and you hear the the scratching scrabble as Cloud climbs up the ladder. With some grace, as much as a, a large cat can accomplish. And in the doorway, Runa, a large, dark cat, shaped like a mountain lion, but its ears kind of tassel off. And it has these shimmering, dark blue, almost stripes to its pelt. Its head is low and its shoulders raised as it looks about this room, trying to understand what is happening, where Yarel is, what the noise is. And it can smell the blood. You can see its nose just twitch. Loud. And I and I call it to me to kind of try and actually um, bring her into comfort a little bit to nuzzle um, on a river and try and um, help to to comfort and to keep her this end as well and away from the smell and uh, potential prey that um, that yeah Ural knows that that this that's going to be pretty tempting but uh, she's she's old enough now to like she's trained enough that. Um, she won't she won't be attacking anyone unless she's told that she's allowed whatever food is on offer Mm -hmm. and and this is not food and she kind of lets out a a rumbly sound somewhere between a purr and a meow almost as you kind of pull her head too and her body relaxes 
as she sits. I kind of scratch her behind the, the ear to calm her down. And you feel and the weight of her. me from, from the gripping fingers as well, so I'm like... You feel like... the weight of her just leaning into you almost as her kind of rump sits on one of your feet and the back legs go. The tail swats slightly against this rudimentary bed as she settles. That that kind of relaxes me as well, from what's going on outside and right here. It's um, it's a, a welcome distraction um, and comfort. This You're one so worried about the cursed too. crows. Go and watch the road. You can hear the accent. The accent. The argument is still going. <laughs> uh, terrible accent coming out of my face. Uh, yes, yeah, you can <laughs> yeah. hear the argument still Edward. going, and it's it's kind of hit a head where. They've decided they can't move her because she's giving birth. This is the worst place they could be, according to them. And they're kind of bickering over who's going to do what about it. Driver, be stronger. And I, I'm trying to give her a thing of try not to shout out. Try and keep, use that power mm -hmm. for, for giving birth. Don't lose it in a scream. Yeah, okay, so do a, a persuasion convince roll for me. Okay, first roll, oh god, I'm, right, so my persuasion is three. I put a, a 1B convince, mm -hmm. so I roll four dice but drop four? one, is this cor yes, correct? Yes, that's correct, yes. Okay, right, let's try that. Here we go. Uh, Oh, <laughs> did I do that wrong? Wait, I did that wrong. <laughs> I dropped four. Hold on, let's do that better. I dropped one. <laughs> there, there we go. go. That's better. 15. 15. <laughs> Zero is pretty awful. Okay. She gives you a, a nod, her jaws clenched, and she really grits and holds in whatever sound she was trying to make. And Runa, I'd like you to it. make a... Okay. No, I just I just say to her, use it. Like use that power. Push it. Use it. Aruna, I'd like you to make a final healing test. Uh again, will you treat ailment for this? She's not yet injured. Try to avoid that if we can. very good it takes another two hours you keep her calm you keep her conscious you coach her through the labor and you encourage the child and it is born healthy if a little small now and the world outside more. and the world outside seems to have gone quiet Yorel, in that time, the two bickering men have moved away. There are others in the camp, but they have gone to waiting. But the work here is done. Go ahead, Alyssa. Keep them warm. Get her something to drink. Now we rest. I um, move away from Reva and, and go over to Runa, who's holding the child at this point, and look at it. It's too small. and But I say it just not loud enough for Reva, and I leave. I will bring the baby to its mother so she can get nursing and rest and the pair do settle Riva falling asleep fairly easily after her labor it 
And you know they will be there for as long as they can. I'll just keep watch over them for as long as I can. <laughs> Ural, you drop down into the camp. And there's six or seven people here. A couple up in the other houses, but most around the fire waiting. And they all look to you expectantly. I, I walk, I walk over. It's alive, it's small. We're we gonna do with a small baby. Keep it alive. Just like the rest of us. And if you think we're too close, why didn't you say so when we were discussing it? There's a loud sniff from Grayson and he wipes his nose. No point in saying now if you're not heard. And uh, do can we see the wall from here? Are we that close that we can see the wall? You can see the wall in that where you are, the trees are kind of less densely clustered um, because you're near to the river. And following down the river, there's a break between two mountains, and there you can see that grey shape in the distance, that ever looming boundary. And even if you couldn't see it, you'd know exactly where that wall was. We should head for the mountains. There's been no snow again. We should head higher. That's the problem we're getting higher as the snow starts to fall but not from the sky from the bloody mountains and it take us down with it can you not hear the creaking no no i'm not scared of the snow i'm scared of an avalanche i'm scared of the creaking cracking fucking ice that damn wall Maybe the whole thing's coming down. Maybe that's not a bad thing. We can go back up well, the river. You... Go back up the river? Well, bring that up with Runa. Not really my call. Like I said, no point in speaking if you're not hers, isn't that right, Yarel? Why don't you bring it up with Runa? She listens to you. Fine, I'll try again. Is this what everyone wants? Or just you? What about the rest of you? There's a few side-eyeing glances. And slowly, one by one, they all nod. They want to move away from the wall. They're all still afraid. Right. All right. I'll talk. Things are happening at the wall. We should find out what, even if we are going to move away. And I kind of wonder, uh, like, if they've, they've been cooking up any of that food, I'm just going to, like, go grab a sort of handful mm -hmm. and then kind of, like, head to the edge of the village with Cloud to just patrol a bit. Like, I don't want to get involved in, in all this politics again. This, you know they'll be and bickering and discussing yeah. about where they should go up the river, but yeah. then, you know, the snows are melting, so the river's going to be a mess and... Yeah, the river's likely to flood. It's probably not a good idea to head near the river at this point. Um, but 
But yeah, we, we've had this discussion before and kind of went in circles and then clearly everyone made a decision and then didn't like it. So um, she's kind of fed up that there's no, that we haven't really reforged ourselves properly, that we're still, that we're still kind of broken. Um, and that, that this, she wants this that to change, um, but she doesn't quite know how to do it and doesn't feel like she has that to do it. Mm-hmm. And you take yourself down on your patrol, edging ever closer to the tree line, to that exposed stint of ground between you and the wall. It's really not that far. And then you hear the horn, that one short blast that means the crows are moving. Someone's either coming in or coming out. It's it's too far away to see anything, like any movement as to whether I see a, a gate opening at the bottom. Make or an awareness it... notice test for me. Okay. Uh, oh, I took notice with a B as well. So uh, that's nice. another bonus point. So let's drop the right m- number though. So I roll same four, drop one. No, is that right? Yeah. The bonus is a bonus, but it's dropped. That's yes. Three, four. So if your awareness is three, it's three plus one from your bonus dice. So you're rolling four and then you're dropping one. Okay, there we go. 14. Perfect. 14. Very good. You scan and you can see there is some busyness on the wall. It's very hard to, to make out. There's a lot of mist being blown about by the wind. And turning your head, you can actually see a rider probably quite a distance from you but there is a rider a ranger or a crow going towards the wall from this side from the woods and he is mounted on a dark horse on the back of which he's either got a very large sack or there's a body I kind of I hunker down to not get spotted um How, how close are they? And they're on a horse, so they're, they're going to be moving at quite a pace. I'm never going to be able to, like, get close enough to even see it, a body, or, or do, am I? If I You think up. you could probably get closer for a better look, but it will mean exposing yourself, because there's this wide expanse where, essentially, the Night's Watch have deforested. So they can see yeah. a wildling assault before it comes anywhere near the wall. So he's left that boundary of the forest, basically. Yeah, and, I'd be and he's having in to walk open out. no man's land. Yeah, it's she. She has no. It's not important enough. He's going back, and if he was coming towards them, it would be different. But he's go. He's leaving their land. Um. So m- much as she's curious, like if he's if he, he has a body and if it's one of us, but uh, she doesn't want to just walk alone into and, and essentially pull, pull attention when mm-hmm. um, when the, the camp is so close. So she will reluctantly just watch from a distance. I think she'll just watch him until he, pretty much until he gets to the wall to see if anything happens, if they turn around and come back out and stuff like that. She's, she's wondering okay. if this is a cue for a... Um, an assault of some kind so she's gonna stay there wait and watch and runa you can hear the bickering although they're keeping it a little quieter now of your family down by the fire of the clan as they discuss where to go and what to do how they're going to move riva and the baby there's arguments that they should stay what's the point of killing riva and the baby they haven't been caught yet the crows don't see the end of their beaks, essentially, is the verdict of one person. The crows have troubles of their own. We move in a few days when Riva is ready to move. What do you know about crow troubles?
One of the women Summer is, is coming. talking to you. Ice melts. Rivers rise. What do they care Don't about the rivers rising? The They're up the damn wall. River's gonna have to rise a bloody long way to get to them. Just let the crows worry about the crows. We'll worry about the river when we have to worry about the river. I trust all of us, no, to keep well enough away from it. And the conversation quiets. You're brought a share of the rabbit that had been cooked that Yarel had brought a couple of hours before. And people kind of go about their tasks. It's not really been settled, but for now, the conversation has stopped. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. And uh, what is the name of this female wildling who's been talking to you? Ingrid. Ingrid. All right. She smiles and she seems very pleased it's a girl. And she turns and she kind of gives Jackson a ha ha kind of look. Jackson more in favor of uh, more men for the clan. Jackson always worried. Right. Jackson forget was born from a woman. And he's just sore he lost some money to Ingrid. I love that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he lost something. And you can see him hand over. <laughs> Going on. <laughs> I think what he has is he has a, a dagger that he has is pr quite prized for him. It's like a hunting knife, and he hands this over to Ingrid in a nice little leather sheath. He has another, so he's not going to be without. But he's sore right. to be losing it. I shouldn't have been so cocky then. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a little laugh about their little bit. Go about my dinner. Right. Back at the wall. You have been busy in your preparations, Sabak. Gathering the men you will take to check the wall on either side here at Giant's Castle. And you have chosen the best amongst your options. Some of the patrol still out would maybe have been your preference, but you'll make do. And the elderly maester has arrived with ten perplexed stewards who have no idea what they're meant to be doing. I brought the eyes and the ears, as the commander said. I thought I was just taking rangers out. Five, 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 five keen eyes and patient men. And he kind of presents the stewards with an arthritic, knobbly arm. Why does it seem like you wanted to build her for this? Not for me to tell the commander how to command. But if You're the right. wall's in trouble, Usually a builder is a useful man. Usually. I do know a good builder. Oh. I've seen him from a window. Likes to climb. Likes to jump. Scurries like a flea. Very big flea. 
five cane eyes, five, five patient men. Where is this flea, Maester? I think Laris comes uh, uh, lumbering in, uh, loping into the scene at this point. I think the Maester oh, grabbed you and said, come with me, I need you as well. <laughs> Are these, uh, are my, Sir Burke, I believe that these, these stewards are, are actually for, for, for my command. <clears throat> you have a command? Uh, yes, my first command. From, from the, oh, look the at command. you. Moving up in the world, getting a command. And what, pray tell, were you doing, supposed to do with ten men? Well, it, it was five, and, and I was supposed to uh, inspect uh, the castle and, and give a full report on uh, any damages. Mm. So we're supposed to patrol outside and check the castle as well. Oh. Perhaps we're meant to escort you. Um. Well, if that's if that's what the the commander said, then that that's what we should do. Very right, well. You have provisions and a horse. Or are you supposed to scuttle along the walls like a flea, as the maester so aptly put it? Uh, sheepish uh, look to the side. Not knowing that uh, that that name had traveled so far so quickly. You see, it's it's the eyes and the ears and the mouth and the nose taking instructions from the brain. Yes, yes. And the arms and the legs—they come into it somewhere. Yes. Right then. Well, it's a. Uh, uh... The work of a builder is 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 slow and uh, and and steady. The, the, well, they don't, they don't normally give me a horse. I, I just I'm expected to walk the whole the whole length. Keep the eyes keep the eyes open. It would be slower going. Well, you can only see so much at, at uh, horse's pace. Slow, sort of the uh, best way to see everything. I find. You won't tire? Haven't yet. <laughs> Been here. Been here a couple years. Very well. Laris, I'd like you to roll a persuasion convince so that cool. Matt might know just how convincing you're being in your explanation of what your job is and how best to do it. Let's use that uh, bonus dice here, too. Awesome. So that counts as an extra test dice for you. Um, so if your rank in persuasion is three, it goes up to four, for example. Oh. Twelve. Quite convincing. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Seems you know something around here. Well, let's not dawdle. I'd like to try and be back before sunup if we can help it. Of course. And together, as a group, you push out to the crane elevator. This strange contraption, part siege engine, part perhaps witchcraft. You have no idea how it stays together, Laris, as you look at it. It doesn't quite make sense to you. But there are ropes and pulleys and maybe it's like a sail. And you try and justify in your brain how this thing works. And Burke, you can hear it creaking and complaining as it always does. 
there's a joke, a giant's chair, that the most treacherous part of the wall is the part where you go down it. Because hmm. you don't want to go too fast. And right, there is a... Once. And there is a tension in the air as that crackling sound seems to precipitate everywhere, although it's nowhere near as ominous or as large as it had been in the courtyard. It's more like a tinkling. And slowly you are lowered. And as you are lowered, you meet the rider who'd blown his horn. And on the back of his horse is slung a body, or at least half of one. What happened here? Commander, we were ambushed. And he kind of helps what remains of his brother from the horse. It's mostly a torso and a head. What in the God's name ambushed you? I wish that I knew, sir. I wish that I knew. If I'd known, then I would have killed it. Look what it did to him. And the rider is shaken. As he looks down He'll... to his companion, whose eyes are wide open in fear. Yeah. And he'll reach into his cloak and pull out uh, a small wineskin. Drink this. It'll help the nerves a little bit. Thank you, sir. Get him inside. He's not the first brother we've lost today. We'll need to set up for a ranging to go hunt this thing down, whatever it is. We can't do that took now, the though. others, sir. Others? How We're many on this patrol? Six split into two pairs. Where did you two last see Two builders, four rangers, sir. Where, where were they last? Where did you last see them? And he describes how there is a a rock in the middle of the forest where it's kind of the split place where they divide to go and do their ranging. They were patrolling for wildlings, Obviously and that was the last that. place he'd seen them. And he hadn't heard any horn calls, and nor had you. And the horn does ca carry a long way. Mm -hmm. Get back inside. You've done your duty. We'll need to build two pyres after all. Commander Dardarian would be less than pleased. Should I? Seems we're going to have an extra. To him, sir. Yes. Tell him what you told me, and let him know that we are going to need to delay this survey to go find the lost man. Yes, sir. Good luck. And you're out. Sorry, go ahead. No, that was it. You're out. You can see more men coming down from the wall. A party. And you can see the movement of the crank of this lift that carries the men up and down. More are coming down the wall. Can I tell how many at all? Make an awareness notice step for me. You can see, kind of, you can make a rough estimate, but I want to see how keen your eyes are as you stare out across no man's land towards that grey leviathan um, of the wall. Okay. Now I have this dice, right, that I was kindly gifted? You sure do. So can I use that? Does you that mean I roll can. 5d6? And, yep. then and you only drop, drop whatever bonus dice one. you have. Yeah. 
So, yes, okay. awareness is three, but add that and the bonus notice check thing. Okay, fingers crossed. What is it? 19. Say? 19. Very good. So you scan, and you can tell almost by movement as much as individual figures that there's what appears to be uh, 16 men assembling at the base of the wall. And you're not sure if more are to follow, but they are certainly forming into a, a regimented party with one at the lead. And um, how far away was that rider from, from me when he left the forest? Can I edge? Uh, I want to keep watching them kind of thing, but kind of head where, uh, where that horse was. Uh, a little bit. I want to. Um, I'm trying to judge so how close the rider has made it all the way to the wall us. at this point. Yes. Um, yes. So you would yes. estimate it's probably um, if they're all mounted, it'll take them maybe 20 minutes to cross no man's land at a reasonable pace. If they're really pushing, maybe they could do it in 10. If their horses are short footed, if they're walking, it could take them much longer than that. Maybe an hour. Okay. Uh, and you said there's around 16. Um, how many are in our little party, our clan, right now? Uh, in your kind little clan, number? at the at the uh, the three tree houses, as I shall think of it, um, you think you have a kind of 12. You have a couple that kind of they come in and out. They come between you and another group, but there's maybe yeah. 12 of you with uh, Bruna. But of that, I guess that, 13 that if we include the baby. Yeah. Okay, Crane. <laughs> Go for it, baby. Here's a spear. Um, <laughs> Baby's you're a wild spear. Lady. Yeah. Um, so, uh... Oh, man, I am... So you would know, kind of, even if you met and you had the advantage of the trees, it would probably not go yeah. too well for your group. No, this is, this is not good. But at the and same time, us moving you. and being able to get... Yeah, if they're coming after us anyway, then there's not much that uh, that can happen. But uh, so I'm um, going to gonna head back a pace um, to try and at least warn that we might have possible incoming, that we should prepare for it. Um, but there's but ru running isn't really an option. They're on horseback. It, uh, you know, we've got new baby and new mother various things we it's better for us to just hunker down here and if they're coming here then they're coming here if they're coming for us they're coming for us sort of thing so i'm i'm gonna head back with uh with cloud at, at pace to um give everyone the heads up we might I'm sorry chat something. i only briefly forgot about the baby all right i remembered <laughs> I got that. all right the baby so has a toothpick yeah okay yeah you come back to the group and you know everyone's kind of going about their jobs there's some repair happening on one of the tree houses since it seems they've decided they're staying maybe for a bit longer uh runa Enough is of that. having lunch we got company possible company get the things you need we can't run they'll be here too quick just we need to prepare in case they're coming here. And uh, I'm grabbing uh, some extra sort of spears and things that are leaning up against one of the houses. Maybe trying to just dish them out so that people have something. You share out the weapons. There's some disagreement about whether they should kind of bunker or whether they should go and see if they can lead the the crows away. If the crows are coming, maybe they can lead them on a dance through the forest. Well, yeah, some of you with me will go watch them. They might not be coming for us. A rider left the forest with what looked like a body. They might be looking for something else. They should have no qualms with us. Don't fight them unless they fight you. Um, hey. And I'll go.
go through the guys that look like they're the most sturdy warrior types uh, or mm -hmm. scouty type people that I know and hunters. Um, yeah. Some needs to stay here in case, you know, to protect people like a newborn and things. Uh, and then just like, I think four or five of us to head back with me to go and see and just watch from a distance. Try not to get into trouble, but um, be ready so like in case we make can, a... like, yeah, lead them. Either a persuasion convince or a warfare command as you organize uh, around you. I didn't take an extra thing in command, so I might, because I did take convince, although I'm going to okay. be looking at those. I'll take a warfare convince. Think... You... So you roll can your I warfare do that? rank. Or... Yeah, we can mix them up. Can I use my bonus convince that's from persuasion? Mm-hmm. Oh. Then I decree it to be so, in this case. It is so. We make it so. Okay, so... Charlie there? has spoken! Yeah. And hit her mic for extra emphasis. <laughs> um, okay, is this correct? Wait, no. It's a, it's roll four because I got the convince. Oh my goodness, yep. don't roll 34. <laughs> <laughs> 34 <laughs> d6s. Oh, that wasn't great. I didn't think... I didn't convince them at all. <laughs> Most of them were ones. All right, so... You kind of outlay what you think your plan is, and you you say to Grayson and Ingrid to come with you. You say, tell Jackson you stay here and watch the baby and watch Runa. And they begin to squabble between each other about who's going where and why, and Ingrid turns to you, Runa, and asks what you think they should do. What's best for Riva and the baby? Where should they go? I agree with Yarel. Just keep an eye out. Don't engage unless they engage you first. Just watch, see where they go. Come back and warn us if anything is amiss. Do they look like they've been convinced? I would like Runa to make a status roll. They look between Runa and you, Yorel, and Grayson lets out a heavy sigh. Well, come on then, let's get moving. I give Runa a, a tiny nod of thanks, but um, I'm still kind of pissed that these guys are so damn reluctant to save their own damn skins. Come on. And I lead them back to where I was. Uh, diverting slightly to where I saw the rider so that we're potentially closer if they are coming back that same route. Okay, so you push kind of into the forest a little bit rather than kind of taking a direct route from camp towards the wall. Yeah, and you push sort of... down to roughly where you think the rider probably emerged from the tree line. And you take up various positions. I like you to make a stealth roll. Uh, this would be stealth hide. Okay. I think that's what it's called. I've got sneak. I don't think I've got yes. hide. Right. I will take sneak. Okay. You will take sneak? Okay. Yep. Um. And what we'll, we'll count this as is how well you hide your tracks as you reach your hiding places, as opposed to how well you just hide in the tree. Okay. Six. Six. You push your way through, um, you have, uh, as kind of discussed, Grayson, Ingrid, and two others with you. And they've pushed off and kind of circled around so that you can almost flank the, the road that's been trodden in by the earlier rider. 
some push further back and out of sight and you sit and you wait with that wind rattling around Jardin, Laris, you are the commanders on this ride out south, uh, north of the wall even and how do you proceed? Uh, after getting everybody saddled up uh, I think we're going to go as quick as we can to the um, to this meeting rock so that way we can start tracking our lost brothers because we can't we can't waste time something's taken them and we need to find them sir what should I well shouldn't one of us be inspecting the wall I'm not going to leave you out there unprotected when there's something roaming around out there. And I don't have time to send you back. Welcome to your first ranging, Recruit Laris. It's a day for first then, isn't it? Quite. And we'll head on out. Okay, do you proceed as a column? as two groups as a, a mass what is your kind of riding order uh given the given the density of the trees around there and that sort of thing it's probably going to have to be a single column ride unfortunately um you know it's not a heedless plunge into the woods it's it's absolutely going to be we're moving we're looking we're keeping an eye on things we're making sure that you know we aren't wading directly into an ambush But otherwise, it's with it pretty much about as much speed as we can coax out of the horses otherwise. All right, so I'm going to suggest that you proceed almost uh, two by two, but kind of just out slightly out of kilter with each other. So it's not two, two, two. It's one, two, three, mm -hmm. four, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's a zigzag um, sort of thing almost. Yeah, and yeah. then you can kind of narrow as you, as the, the road will narrow as you get into the forest. But it's probably the quickest sure. way to proceed. And you do. Laris, where do you position yourself in the the marching order? Uh, right at, at the front of the second column, but uh, a, a length behind Jarden. Okay. And you lead the pair of you down across no man's land and into the wood. And there's an eerie feeling. There are birds that call. There's the crunch of snow as it falls from trees disturbed by the passing of riders. And that distant cracking noise, maybe it's just in your heads now, but it's there. That ominous lurching of the wall. What do you do as you enter into the woods? into the tree line. Scan the woods. See if there's anything that we can make out. I guess that'd be an awareness notice check, please. Sure, it might be. Oops, I put it in the right place. Thank you so much, Kai, for that sub. Ooh, not the best day. Six. And uh, Dev, if you'd like to roll for Laris as well, unless you think he's taking another action at this time. I will roll. All right, shout out those rolls for me. That was a six, by the way. Six. For okay. those listening to the home game. Oh, I did that wrong again. Ah. Sorry? We are two retweets away from whatever is second in our list of retweet goals. I think it's another boon for the players. 
Okay, that's a 16. 16. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so, Jordan, you are busy leading and trying to decide where to go as you push into the woods. The man didn't give you very much to go upon. He, you, you're familiar with his patrol. You are, of course, commander of the rangers. You know where yes. the standing stone is, where the path breaks, and the three mm -hmm. routes that are generally taken for patrol here in the forest. But you know there's a lot of treachery between the trees. And your mind is full of all of this, as well as the bodies you've seen today, the poor, ill-prepared troops that you're leading. In fact, you've got builders with you right now who are almost definitely going into a dangerous situation that isn't to do with climbing and repairing a wall. Mm -hmm. And you don't notice anything very much focusing on keeping formation and leading the way. But Laris, maybe it's the fear that you've had all day. That shaken feeling, the fear of a fight that's real, being stabbed, being caught. Because you notice, you're, you're sure someone, someone is watching. Someone is in the tree. It's, it's more a shape than you can see a head and eyes or anything, but you're sure up in that tree over there, someone is watching. What do you do? Sir, so that the, they're above us. Who's above us? I don't know. It's just a figure, you see it in the trees there, right? See that shape? You'll have to forgive me, recruit Laris. My eyes aren't what they used to be. And he'll hold up his arm. Halt! You're sure? And, and I, um, I look to see if the if the person in the trees reacts to the halting of the the horses. Yarrow, you watch as they break the tree line and proceed in an organized column into your woods. And your eyes are on him as that recruit turns and looks directly at you as if he has some sixth sense. As if he knew which tree you would be sat in. How do you respond? I think Yarrow is just kind of frozen, staring, like hoping that she that it was a tiny movement that he spotted or that he's looking at something near her past her like you know a bird whatever she is is as still as cloud in an in a pounce type position she is her the, the only thing really moving is her eyes darting between the looking at, at the crows and and ready for if she needs to because i think she's got her kind of spear at the ready but it's mm -hmm. not like a aiming for them type thing it's just ready it's um just yeah it's 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 ready if she needs it but she's just scanning them and trying to flit between the other uh, wildlings in the trees to to try and silently give them a, a don't move. Okay. Don't move. So I'm going to offer you a choice. Would you like mm. to make an awareness, empathy, to communicate with your wildling brethren through eye movement? Or would you like to make a, another stealth in the hope that you blend into the trees that are not outright seen? I, I mean, I think, I think, like, reaction wise she just wants to absolutely melt into this tree like she she did not she did not come here for a fight she came here to watch them observe mm -hmm. them but she didn't want to trigger conflict it's the last thing that she wants so All right um, so you're not moving so this can't be sneak um so this will just be a straight up mm. stealth check okay so just the 3d4 do I, I don't drop one if I'm not putting a bonus dice, or do I always drop one? Yep. 
No, you don't drop one, no. but I think you need to put zero in the command, otherwise the command breaks, if I remember correctly. You can leave it blank, okay. actually. It'll be fine. Oh, you can leave it blank? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, so it doesn't want to be four. It wants to be... Or you can just do slash break. die space 46. Oh, no, it did break it. Right, hold on. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, that's weird. Um, so it's three. There we go. Eight. Okay. Oof, better than my six, but... Oh, okay, um, Burke and Laris, what is your passive awareness? This is three times your awareness rank. Twelve. Twelve? The fifteen. Fifteen. You know that shape in the tree is a person. A very still person. Yarel, what is your passive awareness? As you melt into this tree and you watch and you hope. Um, so again, it's three times your awareness rank. Oh, okay, I see. Um, well, my awareness is three, so nine. Okay, so nine. There's something familiar about one or two of the crows. You've seen them before. There are a lot of crows along this wall. There are plenty in that castle. But you think you've seen a couple of these before. There's a jolt in her stomach when she recognizes them. Um, an almost flashback. And um, she's not just like frozen for not wanting to uh, be seen in the tree, but for a moment at least, there's, a, there's almost a, a I can't move frozen um yeah she doesn't she's not gonna she's she's gonna wait if they if they attack she'll deal with it she's not doing anything so Burke there's no whatever thing was this isn't that but no it isn't They're however they're not hunting us. If they were hunting us, we'd be in a fight already. Right. Of course. One moment, lad. Good eyes, though. <clears throat> so, Jordan Burke of the Night's Watch. We don't mean you harm. We're passing through to try and recover some of our men who were taken by someone or something. If you know anything about this, let us know. We'll be out of here that much faster and you can get on with your lives and us with ours. If not, let us pass through. You don't want this fight, we don't want this fight. It wasn't us. We want no qualms with you. Sky Watchers? Yeah. If you will use that word. When we find out a better one, maybe. What you fight you it? If it's not us. Some would rip a man in half. Many things that'll do that. You seen anything I'm, around I'm here lately? I'm moving now so that they can see me. I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not staying stealth. I mean, I'm like wary of it if anyone looks like they're about to reach for a weapon. But he's clearly looking into the tree and he's talking. I'm talking now, so. Yeah, and he's he's waving the men down, making sure they don't like draw weapons. We're having a talk right now. This is fine. Steady, men. I've got the orders, Laris. Thank you. Right. You promise you'll leave us alone? On my honor. Before you decide, Yorel, uh, I would like Sir Jardin to make a persuasion convince roll. 
Unless he is being deceptive, at which point, uh, Matt, roll the equivalent for deception. You don't have to tell oh, us no, which. He... Just uh, roll, which is appropriate. Absolutely. That is a 23. If that beats your intrigue defense, Yorel, you will be convinced. I'm just going to do this as a simple... Uh, yeah, my injury defense, if I've got it correct, is nine. So that definitely beats it. Okay, perfect. Sir Perk, the last time that I saw people in the trees, they took a man right off his horse and he was dead before he hit the ground. Yes, and if they wanted to do that, they would have done that while we were sitting here dithering about whether you saw something, Laris. The fact that they aren't means they don't want to fight either. No, they How don't. How far away <laughs> was this creature? Where was your men, men attacked? Somewhere near the rock. Up the path a bit. We need to search. There's about a half dozen of them gone. Um, how far does that, do I know of this rock that they, they meet at, and how far is that from our camp? So, the rock, I imagine, is almost like a mile marker. It's a boulder that's been mm. there for a long time, but that's essentially what it forms, and it's probably a good three to five miles into the woods, which isn't very far on horseback, you know, it's a, it's a relatively no. short ride. Um, from your camp on foot, you know, again, it's probably five miles in the other direction as you're nearer to the river, and this rock is in the woods. Maybe a little further, the, depending on the curve of the land. Of creatures that I know um, that may do this, uh, and and knowing of of what potentially of what I might might know, would I think that if someone was attacked in that kind of region? that they would have a territory that would spread, or a, a movement pattern that might spread close to the camp, to our camp. Okay, um, so let's do uh, either a knowledge roll or a cunning memory. Mm. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have any specializations in knowledge. Uh, no, <laughs> knowledge is only two and cunning is three, so I probably should do cunning if I get the chance. Okay. But I don't yeah, have do anything and I've... Best used my fancy dice from the chat so i guess As you try we'll just and think what, what this predator could be and how it might behave you draw on previous experience previous knowledge things you've been told before things you've heard about from Ooh. your scouts that is a 16. you would imagine this close to the wall it's likely to be a man that's attacked another man most of the dangerous things are a little further back but the woods do have shadow cats. They do have bear. There are dire wolf and packs that could tear a man apart. But then there's that shiver up your spine because you know there are worse things out there. Things that come from a dark place. And with summer here, lots of things are migrating, including your people. And whatever it is, if it's willing to attack a crow, what's a wildling? May I follow? At a distance. If you're in danger, we're in danger, and that that's what matters to me. You want to help I can help hunt? track it. That's assistance we'd be appreciative of. You know the land better than we do. All right. In exchange for you Should leaving us alone, I'll help you. Call that a fair trade. You become... oh, climb down the tree. No, I'm just climbing down the, the tree. Come back. 
Laris, you become aware of the four or five other wildlings with Yorel. I think it was four. They are also coming down from trees and out from behind thick trunks. And the my, and Cloud leaps down and comes next to um, Yorel as well. And probably, well, no, no, doesn't do anything specific. She's, she's probably haunched um eyeing up these crows but doesn't uh really know any of them i don't think mm -hmm. she's too young um, the horses are twitchy as the shadow cat comes down from the tree this is an animal that would easily kill a horse and often will in these woods i and... kind of like push her like you know order her to kind of go back up so that she doesn't spook the horses because again Yorel doesn't want to cause a fight here if mm -hmm. one of the horses throws a rider and she's blamed for it so she'll back she'll back the cloud off Laris you've never heard of a tame shadow cat oh hearing myself hello no and, and I think that I've I've seen them before in our uh battles though so I, I think i've seen them in action certainly something i wouldn't call tame um i would like sir jardin to make this cunning memory test cunning memory she says i do A 19. You look at Yorel, and there is something very recognizable about her. She's maybe one of the wildlings that you were making deals with before Glover. Maybe she was there. One of the skirmishes. The skirmish. But that's something that's kind of ticking over in your mind. And it's, it's the cat almost that provokes the thought. But it's Yorel herself that is the memorable thing. Or the memorable person, I should say. And as, as the cat goes away, you know, they'll start to make motions so that they can start to get moving again. What's your name? URL. Does that provide any recognition for me? What do you think, Kate? Would your name be known? Um, I think it depends if the knights, if any of the Night's Watch came back and interacted with the clan since the skirmish, like, properly interacted. Um, I, I definitely, I mean, face is definitely recognisable. I don't know if we, there was t time to exchange names unless we've done trading since. So I, I think maybe what, what we decide. Beck might know your name as if maybe there was a wildling prisoner or so that was captured during the skirmish and taken back to Castle Black. Oh, no, Castle Black, sorry, uh, Giant's Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. I think, you know, the name doesn't especially go, oh, it's, it's mm -hmm. Chef. Yeah. You know, it... Okay. You're well, I'm Jarden. Should at least exchange that much if we're going to be working together. All right, Jarden. She kind of gives him a, uh, I don't know. She just she tr she looks str deep in him, like uh, remembering the last time they exchanged a look, um, like eighteen months ago, like a, a moment frozen in time kind of thing before everything went back to crazy, which I won't explain. Um, 
but yeah, they 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 share they 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 met mm-hmm. before. Yeah, there, there's a, a there's a look and exchange and acknowledgement. Yeah, sort of kind of at knife point almost. You know, it was yeah. So, and we'll we'll keep it at that for right now. That's probably mm-hmm. a good place for it. Theris looks to the uh, wildlings that fall back uh, behind us uh, and looks to Sir Burke and says, I see you're a far different man than Glover with them. I think he, I think you're the wise one and, and he was the fool. Commander Glover had his... Had his positive points. They were few, but they were there. But his hatred of wildlings was not among them. There are far worse things out here. Things that can be our enemies. And certainly not these particular wildlings. One of the students in the party... Go ahead, Doug. If I see anything worse than that cat, I'm sure I'll fall right off my horse. Try not to. It really hurts, let me tell you. One of the stewards in the party is making note of the wildlings. A quick account on some parchment that's then tucked away. A couple of the rangers aren't too pleased with the arrangement, but they don't vocalize it as such. It's more body language and more something that the wildlings would pick up than perhaps the leaders at the front discussing shadow cats and the like. But there is something in the air. And as you re remember that you're in the middle of the woods, you realize it's already getting darker. The longer summer days don't mean much when the canopy draws close and the sky is always cloudy. Time to pull lanterns. Lights. We need to be able to see to get our way through here. Zaris looks back to make sure that his five have taken the command from Sir Burke. And they have very diligently. I'm going to head up to the front of... Uh, keeping my distance, but I I don't want to get blinded by the lanterns, and I um, and I want to look for tracks, but to be honest, at this point, I think we're just heading to the rock and going, he said that that's where they were attacked, so there's not a huge amount of tracking to happen right now, but ooh. but I will, um, yeah, head, head up nearer the front so that the lantern is behind me. Okay. While um, all this is going on, Bruna. I'm gonna can I just say I'm gonna yep. send one of one of the people with us. I'm gonna send back to camp to explain okay. what's happening. Perfect. Just seeing so you know. it. Perfect. Because I think that's what we should do. Awesome. Uh while this is going on, Runa, uh Jackson, who has been fretting somewhat, has actually ripped down one of the tree houses. He decided it was too obvious. If anyone were to come in this direction, it's the first thing that would be seen. He's also brought in branches to try and mask the, uh, the treehouse that Rivers in with the baby to try and make it look like just another tree. And this is uh, the work that he's been doing all the while, vigilantly staring out, keeping an eye and an ear for anyone's approach. He has others helping him and the camp is kind of being cleared and cleaned. The fire is the hardest thing but wildlings have had much practice. The flames doused, the embers and the chard buried. Fresh snow is collected and brought to cover it. It will melt and it will become slushy, but it's a beginning. And what is Runa doing? I would say she's... um... 
probably um, helping to clean up from the cooking and um, just checking in with everybody, making sure everyone is as safe and healthy. keeping an ear out in case anybody starts raising a fuss because it's going to be getting dark and you have to be wary of, of predators and, and hazards. I'd like you to make a kind of a state, I think it's going to be a status test just to see okay. how much people are aware of you almost leading them in this moment of being the one in charge. Okay. And you said if I don't add bonus dice, I don't drop anything? Yep, that's correct. Uh, I have just seen that we've hit our 30 retweets, so there will be a player boon for one of you. We've had a couple of donations today as well. Architect Origins has donated a boon, very specific for Laris which I hope to get to today. And uh, I'm going to roll a d6 to decide who gets this additional player boon. This is going to be something narrative, probably, uh, for one of you. Let's see. One, two, three, four. That's Alyssa on my screen. Uh, so, Alyssa, you will have another boon coming for you. And that was and an 11 status roll. 11. Perfect. OK. So people are listening to you, they're helping you when needed, and you are, you feel like you're being pretty successful in what is going on here as you wait for news, wait for something, and Ingrid does arrive back, sent by Yarel, with the news that she's met up with the crows and they're making a deal. They're going hunting. Hunting what? Fucking knows. And Ingrid, Ingrid is clearly in a very bad mood at this point. Any joy from the baby is just gone. And it's a grim and glum kind of a mood. Well, we'd better set up watches then. I'll take it first. just kind of oversee the evening routine and make sure everybody knows their assignments. He said they're going out to that rock. And she'll kind of describes where they're going so that you have a better idea of what's going on. All right. There's a lot of them. I'm less worried about them than I am about what they're hunting. Who knows the crows will hunt their own shadows given after chance. Yeah. Doesn't hurt to keep a lookout. Where are we going to go, Rona, after this? If there is something out there, where are we going to go? Well, we can't go south, that's for sure. Never go south. We can't go down river. Nothing but iron men down there. Can't go too far north. Worry about ice fall and all that. So well, we're stuck. We'll decide when we know what the news is.
You're right, Rona. I'm sorry. I'm just tired of being stuck. I know. You're not the only one either. I'd be a lot Nothing happier if the crows tonight. weren't confidently riding around in our woods. Can I stick to their wall? She kicks some more snow and dirt over the uh, fire pit. And the sooner Yarel helps them find what they're hunting, the sooner they'll go back. will know whether it was man or beast or other. She and looks we'll up know. at you at the word other. To do. Is that what you th think it is? You think something got out? Seasons are changing. Things are. We're not the only ones who will want to be on the move. It's best just to be cautious. Learn as much as we can in the meantime. Commander Dondarian, you watched. A pyre built for the dead. One crushed man, one broken man. You heard the account of the ranger, which was very little of an account of anything. One moment they'd been patrolling, the next moment there was only half a man, no horse, no idea where the rest of him went, no sign of whatever it was that had done it was almost like a ghost. And we've heard too, the mutterings between the men, that that ice sheet was knocked down by something. One of the older men says he saw someone sit in that chair. And you watch as the flames grow and the night grows darker with it. What is your final command tonight as night gathers and the watch begins? Have the men keep to their posts. Have the new recruits on hand along the wall. Have them have their first watch now. Let them see what we're doing with them. And have a guard posted in the damn courtyard. No one's sitting in the freaking chair. So we pan across the frozen wasteland of the world north of the wall. Squinting eyes of shivering new recruits staring out. The snow stays white in stark contrast to the black of the trees and the mountains for what seems like hours before with eye strain they finally blink and look to the torches, golden and warm, and huddle a little closer. And out in that forest, a column of crows mixed with wildlings on the hunt for something terrible. And watching the column, the group of wildlings and Night's Watch brothers, there's something in the tree. 
And that is where we will end today's show. I want to say a massive thank you to Kai Hawkeye, who did donate to give all of our players an extra um, plus one dice, which we will implement for next session. All of the dice will, of course, move forward if they've not been spent. And I want to say a massive thank you to our cast and to everyone who joined us today. Stay tuned, because we're going to be doing Dr. D&D &D right after this with the wonderful Noir Enigma, Susanna Grace, and a very special guest. Let's go around. I want to say well done to each and every one of you. I want to hear your either your favorite part of today or what you're looking forward to next week and where we can find you on the internet. And I'm going to go same way, so clockwise, or that way around, because it's rest. And Kate, let me shut first. Hey, um, I'm less nervous. That was really fun. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I apologize for my appalling, possibly at times, Yorkshire accent. I, I did my best. Um, but it was fun trying it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'm Kate Madison, otherwise known as Actors at Work on many of the social media places, Twitter and Instagram, that sort of thing. Um, I'm also here on Twitch uh, under twitch.tv slash Kate Madison. Um, and yeah, that was really fun. I can't wait for next week. Um, my best bit, oh goodness. Um, I, li I liked when, I, I liked being in the tree uh, when when we were spotted. Uh, you know, those those some of those roles were appalling for sneaking, and it was just great to have that moment of when eyes lock um, and these characters meet, but not necessarily for the first time. Uh, yeah, that was it was great. I'm really really excited to see what happens. I am also very excited and scrambling to find my unmute button. Let's go down <laughs> and speak to the wonderful Alyssa, who played Bruna today. Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Alyssa Odette at Origami Shuriken on Twitter. You can usually find me on Sunday evenings on Channel Other Doc, uh, GMing our Dark Matter Ghost of Salt Maw campaign, which is Ghost of Salt Marsh in space. Uh, we had to postpone last night because of technical difficulties, so we're going to have a makeup session on Wednesday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, and um, this was a lot of fun. I I think personally I, I, I liked that I, I'm off to a, a rather heroic start as a healer with Runa, but it kind of uh, means there's a lot of pressure for me going forward. Um, but I also really enjoyed the the tension as the the Night's Watch and the Wildlings finally sort of collided uh, in the woods. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see how things go from here. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Dev. Hey everyone, I'm uh, Dev Presto. Thanks for joining us. Uh, especially thanks to Architect Origins for trying to save my skin and throw me a bone there. We'll see uh, how that works out. Um, uh, you can find me on, on Twitter at Dev Presto. And uh, my favorite part of today was obviously uh, getting pulled out of that grueling, grueling training sequence. So thanks to my gracious commander. All praise, gracious commanders. And speaking of gracious, the wonderful Matt, how you doing? Doing fantastic, Charlie. This was, uh everything I had hoped for and more. And I am super glad to be here with this fantastic cast, uh, getting to tell this story uh, from a lot of different perspectives. Um, anyways, let's get the plugs out of the way. Hey, you can, I'm Matt. You can find me at, at the killer GM on Twitter. I write about uh, gaming stuff, chat with people back and forth and run games. Uh, I am also the GM of my own five E retroverse remix, the dreadful beat of DJ Strahd. We had to do a slight po postponement yesterday, but that just means we'll be back next week with some wonderful, wonderful neon goodness uh, on Sunday nights. We do it usually every other every other Sunday at uh, 9.30 Eastern. Uh, it's Curse of Strahd, but not quite the way we remember it. Uh, otherwise, I do have a couple other guest spots coming up in places, uh, so keep your ears to the ground for those, as well as uh, a pod I am in that D&D &D podcast, Those Swamp Lizards, a Genesis uh version of the TMNT role-playing game. So, I'm doing a little fun stuff with that. You can find that over where you get your podcasts. Favorite moment of the episode? That's tough. There was a lot of really good, good pieces. Uh, I 
think my favorite part was getting curveballed, coming in and meeting the ranger, and he's got half a body, and it's like, well, hell. There there goes the nice, easy thing of, you know, surveying the castle and making sure it's not going to pieces. No, now we gotta go friggin' monster hunting. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. Appreciate it. Love you, darling. Uh, I would like to say that both the ice sheet on the chair and the monster in the woods are both thanks to chat who knocked it out of the park with sub goals today unlocking two major events um so thank you very much to them and thank you very much to pope <laughs> thank you all so much uh pope world build here pope world build on twitter pope world build on twitch i lurk in all your streams oh good heavens i have been waiting for this campaign and i have been waiting for these wonderful people and all the stories and favorite moment was actually a bit of a small thing again the birth of a child and all the hell that comes with it um and the loss of a bet that that was that that brought me right into the world and made it so very real and relatable absolutely adored it um where you can find this silly face yeah yeah over on the Matt have seven's channel at 9 30 p.m eastern for that uh neon with the strad and the bad bad life choices and consequences which is what i'm looking forward to when we come back next week um thank you all so much for being here where you're live on youtube watching the vod there's much part of the story as we are thank you thank you thank you love you all take care if you have made it this far in your YouTube watching, I would like you to comment, I sat in the chair, so that we know who to blame. Uh, we appreciate you all very much. Please consider leaving us a like. And if you're watching live, stay in your seat or go and get a drink, because uh, Dr. D&D is coming up next. We have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to do a tiny, tiny post credit scene. We have the Watcher in the Woods. And we have a very nervous party that hunts it. And next to you, Laris, a wildling slightly does up. What do you call that then? He looks to the weapon at your side. You're not gonna kill anything with that. And he pulls out the sword from the scabbard and it is a wooden training sword. Either in your hurry or in your fear or whatever, you have packed a very inappropriate weapon. <laughs> and he glances towards Sir Jordan Burke. Should I tell him about this? Not a word. Do you think? He, uh, yeah. And he reaches onto his back, and you see there's a double scabbard there. And he pulls a short blade out of one of these scabbards. And it's a sword that doesn't look like a normal sword to you. The blade is dark and polished. It doesn't appear metal. It's some other material. And you can see it's a little battered and worn from where it's handle wrapped in some sort of fabric. This will kill whatever it is that comes at you. And he hands you the sword. This is your gift from Architect Origins. I will give you some more information about it off screen. Amazing. Cool. He takes the wooden practice sword and he just flings it into the dark of the woods. Out of sight, out of mind. I owe you quite a bit for this favor. I'd rather you didn't. And he walks away. He just. <laughs> You get the impression, like, he wants very little to do with you, but if they're in the fight, he doesn't want you stabbing something with a wooden, like, this practice wooden sword. He wants you to actually have something sharp. <laughs> and that will be our post credit scene. I will say all of our players achieved their agenda goals today. We didn't spend any Destiny points, but I will be awarding XP off screen. And that is everything for us here at The Wall. So stay tuned for Dr. D&D &D, and I'm going to I'm going to play a, a trailer for you that no one has seen yet because I can. I'm going to play the Heroes Next Door trailer. Heroes Next Door is coming up on Friday. It will be our masks game. Stay tuned and we will see you soon.
Try not to roll too many net ones because I'll make fun of your season. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>